What's going on guys? Welcome back to WDYDCSP. What do you do as a central stove processor? Guys, I am Jesse Lopez and I am back with another how-to video. So stay tuned guys. What's going on guys? So we are back with a how-to video and who do we have today? Oh yeah, some of y'all love them. Some of y'all hate them. The complex surgical instruments known as the robotic arms, all right? Guys, it is an upgraded laparoscopic instrument, a, a minimum invasive surgery type instrument, um, completely robotics. Um, what do we know about it? That there are some electrical components on the proximal end, um, followed by some controls a sheath that is fully um, insulated and we have in the distal tip a rotating 360 degree arm here that does all kinds of stuff um, this thing is operated by a control center um, away from the patient but this is a how-to series guys so we can do this in two parts we can do this as a how-to and decon and how to and prep and pack um, but I'm going to talk about decontamination at first now a guys point of use preparation on this um, is with like any other instrumentation gross soil should be removed as best as possible just like an endoscopic instrumentation flexible endoscope if it has ports it should be flushed with um, sterile water um, maybe not enzymatic solution because um you don't know if it's in there and pretty much hard to flush but you should be trying to flush it with some um sterile water at the point of use which is right after surgery when it comes down to us guys with robotic instrumentation um you want to look for that little infamous red dot if it's there um, then this instrument is discarded um, it is no longer used but this does have a usage life and a sterilization life not the same thing guys all right usage and sterilization is two different things um a lot of them have different usages so i'm not even going to try and tell you what this one is because i don't have the ifu in front of me um but please pay attention to that that there is a usage life and a sterilization life to it all right so it comes down to decon of course you want to do your original inspection is you want to make sure that there's no cracks or separations in the box and the seals you want to make sure that the wheels are um, intact and not broken off you want to observe the shaft to make sure that there's no nicks yes you have on gloves but you can pass down and you can feel if there's a nick on the shaft itself now in decon it's very hard with all the moisture to look under lighted magnification but if your decon does is equipped with lighted magnification you definitely want to look at these components here to make sure that there's no fraying of the uh, cords in there or the wires in there so specific to the ifu i cannot speak specifically again because i don't have the ifu in front of me but there is a priming that you have to do with uh these robotic arms okay so it tells you to grab a syringe all right as such and in port number one, you want to draw up some enzymatic and you want to put it in port number one and you want to prime it until you see enzymatic or solution come out the other end. You're then going to soak this instrumentation for um, 30 minutes. It's a 30 minute soak time, guys. All right. That is very vital. 30 minutes, not 30 seconds, not two minutes, not five minutes, 30 minutes, regardless of what the IFU of your enzymatic says. 30 minutes of soak time with the internal lumens. Um, port number one is where it specifies in the IFU, I believe. Um, you're soaking this for 30 minutes. While you're soaking an enzymatic, it is a good idea to press buttons here. You want to manipulate the tip there to loosen up any bio burden, allow for the soak time, and then it's gonna tell you to give it a good rinse. All right, you're going to rinse with treated water. Then you're going to draw up some treated water and you're going to flush the port until it comes out clear. And then under running water, guys, okay, clear water, not enzymatic, clear water 
it's telling you to grab a soft bristle brush, never the metal brushes, soft bristle brush, and you're gonna brush under running water. You're gonna go ahead and brush the components here. I got all kinds of lints falling off my little brush here, but anyway, you're gonna brush under running water, right? Paying attention to all the little hinge areas. Remember this hinge is 360 and different hinges. You wanna go ahead and brush under running water, guys. You wanna open up the jaw, okay? You can do this with your fingers or you can use the little um, knobs at the end to open this up. So remember, you wanna go ahead and open this jaw up to its greatest degree here. And I'm doing it with the little hinge here. And you wanna get between the jaw here. You wanna brush in between the jaws. Make sure you're getting all the bio burden out of there, guys, okay? Okay, then you're gonna rinse under water again. Then it's gonna tell you to submerge under clear water and use, um, you're gonna flush the actual components here. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and flush these ports here. Syringe is probably not the best way to do this, but if you have a water gun, you wanna do that under clear water, not solution. Clear water is asking you to spray these little joints here. All right, after that, it's gonna tell you to um, prime again, you're gonna remove the air in there, dry it out really good, and it's gonna ask you to put it in ultrasonic. What kind of ultrasonic are you putting this in? If you put this in a regular ultrasonic, it's gonna do nothing for this instrumentation. The ultrasonic has to be an irrigating ultrasonic because you wanna prime this port here, you wanna attach the port, and you wanna allow cavitation. This is plastic, guys. Even though it has some metal components, placing this item in a regular ultrasonic is going to do nothing for this instrumentation as much as we want to believe that it is the ifus of most ultrasonics and many ultrasonics are going to tell you that plastic and rubber cannot go into the ultrasonic so you need a special ultrasonic for this especially the length this isn't going to even fit in any standard ultrasonic so it has to be an irrigating ultrasonic where you connect the port there allow it to do its thing to flush the ports give the little cavitation bubbles to get to the metal ends and things of that nature and go from there. You also have the option to place this through a washer disinfector, but which washer disinfector you can put this on? There's only one validated washer disinfectant that is uh, approved for these instruments, all right? Okay, so check that eye if you out as well, but if you're gonna put it through the washer disinfectant, just placing it as is, is again not gonna do this instrument any good guys it doesn't fit in many, in many washer disinfectants so there are special racks that they make with special attachments to allow to flushing the inside of this cannulation and to get good contact and good cleaning mechanical cleaning of this instrument all right guys stay tuned for part two where i will go over the processing of this complex surgical instrument over in the prep and pack side. Peace.